Good morning, everyone. Even though it's been tough, uh, there's still people with a sense of humour. You might have seen a lot of the, the memes going around at the moment. Um, share your favourites, that'll give us a laugh. Um, here's one. Here's Sue. She's 31 years old. She's been homeschooling her kids for the last five days. Uh, great job, Sue. Keep it up. And Sue like she's, looks like she's about 90 years old. <laughs> Um, and we all know, don't we, that parents, are, if lockdown happens in schools, parents are going to find a solution, a vaccine for COVID-19 long before the scientists ever will. But there's a serious side to this pandemic, isn't there? Um, society and life as we know it is grinding down to a pretty low ebb. Um, we're seeing security in supermarkets because we're fighting over the essentials. We see long lines going to Centrelink because... Uh, People have lost their jobs and businesses are closing and there is a sense of uh, fear and anxiety on what's going to happen. Um, there's a degree of uh, frustration that wants to lash out and blame somebody. So you might have seen that other meme this week that says, wash your hands as if you just shook hands with Scott Morrison, which I think is a little unkind. But what's going through your mind? Uh, what about your heart? How are you reacting to the circumstances at the moment? There's going to be a range of things that you're working through. And the question is, what do you do with all that pent up grief? Because that's effectively, that's what it is. And this morning, I want to reflect on Psalm 88. Now, it's written by a bloke called Heman. And at first reading, you think, well, he's the ultimate pessimist, surely. And you think, wow, if this man's a man of God, what's happening here? Where's his faith? Where's his trust? It almost sounds like blasphemy when you read it. But you see, that's an important part of living and life is expressing what we're thinking and feeling. You know, there are 150 Psalms in the Bible. And remember that Psalms are songs. And of those, about 70% of the Psalms deal with lament. Now, you know, Sunday by Sunday, churches sing songs. And if you look at the top 150 songs, you know how many deal with lament? None. Zippo. Zilch. We're not good at expressing our real feelings, especially real feelings to God. And Psalm 88 thinks, well, there's probably good reason for not making a song with lyrics that say, but I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? Well, it sort of feels like spiritual immaturity, doesn't it? Um, aren't we supposed to rejoice in trial and suffering and hardship? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yet this guy, Heman, he he finishes the song, and, and this is the hard bit, because he basically says this, You have taken from me friend and neighbour. You see, he's saying, darkness is my closest friend. Hear what he's saying? I've prayed, I've called out, and you didn't turn up, God. You just weren't there. What sort of friend are you? You've never been there for me. Now, when we're in despair, we tend to exaggerate. And yep, I think that's probably what we've got here to some degree. But you see, God knows how we speak in our despair. God knows how we think. And it's refreshing, I think, to read Psalms of a total lament. This is what he's thinking. And what do we do with this? Because darkness... Is, is something that he's living with. Three times he mentions that. That's how he finishes. Well, let's have a, low, let's have a, have a closer look at all this. Because with or without COVID-19, our world is a mess. <laughs> it's, it's broken and at times it's very dark. And there are some very, very hard things in our history. One of our pollies, our past pollies, has said that uh, life wasn't meant to be easy which created a huge backlash. And someone uh, actually, some wag said, well, actually, life wasn't meant to be liberal. Yet the truth is, 
you can't really live without pain in this broken, dysfunctional world. To some extent, there'll be stress and frustration and pain, and some experience that for a long time. And some, you see, have to live with their dreams shattered, their relationships in pieces. Sometimes there are very toxic relationships that they're living with and dealing with. Sometimes it's chronic illness. Sometimes it's being a carer. And it's really a life of 24-7 care for someone. And here in Psalm 88, he's encouraging us to express our thoughts. But please notice this. Yes, be honest. Express your feelings. And Heman is doing that. But he's doing that to God. He's complaining to God. He's not complaining about God. You can still see as he opens this particular song, he says, Lord, you are the God who saves me. Even with faith, we go through those Christian believing, trusting. We go through darkness and sometimes that darkness can last a long time. Now, let me quote from a stunningly literary work, Princess Bride. Uh, you might have forgotten the movie because there's only really one line to remember, and that's this. Life is pain, Your Highness. Anyone who says different is selling something. I love that line. Yeah. Life is pain. Anyone who tells you different is selling something. Well, guess what? The Bible isn't selling anything. It's the most honest assessment of our world. It gives you a warts and all. It tells you life sucks. It actually paints a picture of people who are prominent in the Bible as people of faith with real feet of clay. And you see, some people, it's all about their expectations. It's about what they think God should be doing for them. And that's why they end up in the pain to some extent, because, well, life should be good for them. If they're a Christian, if they love God, if they're a person who confesses faith, then surely God should look after me. Surely God should keep me in this bubble. Surely COVID-19 bugs can't touch me. And it's, no, oh, life will be rosy and I'll just count my blessings. But that's not true. The Bible isn't selling anything like that. And in darkness, can we sit with that? Can we express it to God honestly that we're feeling low? We feel neglected. We feel like darkness is our best friend. We learn a lot about grace in the dark times. At the end of our tether, you see what we draw on is the knowledge that God loves us and we know he loves us, not because of our performance, not because of the smile we put on our face, not because it's a hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, because I just lost my job. No, no. We know that God loves us with something that happened in history. And friends, I know that for many of you, this is, this is something that's real and very honest and something that you, you know in your heart of hearts. But we have to draw strength from this because this is the truth. God does love us and wants us to love him just for who he is, even in the dark times. You see, if we conducted a survey of people around us at this present moment and said, what do you think of God? What do you think is a God there? People would be saying, well, you know, why doesn't he do something? He was so good and so powerful. Why doesn't he sort this out? Why isn't there a vaccine? Why do I have to postpone my wedding? Why have I got to deal with these issues? Why do I have to sack people that are working for me? If God cares, let him turn up for goodness sake. I should be comfortable in this world. Oh, well, then I believe in him. Well, let me uh, just say a few words on another great book in the Bible that isn't selling anything, and that's the book of Job. Because the whole counsel in that book is not just for Job, it's for all of us. And you see the opening scenes there are God focusing on his servant Job and says, consider my servant Job, faithful, righteous, there is none like him. 
And then the Satan says, Job only loves you because you have given him everything. You know, wife, kids, house, position, prestige, wealth. Take that away and Job will curse you. You see, the devil is saying, he only loves you, God, because of what you give to him. He's a mercenary. Take it away and he will curse you to your face. Now, that's a terrible feeling, isn't it? When you feel people only want to be in your presence or love you because of what you give them. You can feel used at that point and how inappropriate when dealing with God. So let's draw these thoughts together. Yes, the Bible encourages us to be honest, to express our thinking, our feeling, our grief. But know this. In our dark times, we come to God and remember that it's he who loves us. And the greatest expression of that is the cross of Calvary, something Heman didn't know about. You see, Jesus died in our place. He took our rebellion on himself, our self-centeredness, our self-importance, our shaking our fist at God, our mercenary ways, our disobedience, and it's nailed there to the cross. And the father didn't spare his own son, and that's the that's the that's the staggering thing about all this, because here is God, forsaken by God, as we consider Easter in a few weeks. There's abandonment. And there is darkness, and it's recorded in the Bible in words that are (laughs) quite stark. When Jesus cries in a loud voice, 3 p.m. that afternoon, Good Friday, and says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Hear the honesty. There is no thank you, Father, hallelujah. He feels the terror of God the Father turning his back on him, his son, an emotion he's never experienced. And he does it for us. That's love. Romans 5, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God, not only us, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, you see, at just the right time. While we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And God demonstrated his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Friends, these are difficult days. Be honest, express your grief, write it out, pour it out, cry it out. But keep walking with God. We need to pray with tears and rest assured that days are coming when God the Father will take away all tears. We have hope, a living hope in Jesus the one who rose from the dead. And we need to be like Job, who keep trusting the Father, even in these days. God bless.